this morning I'm going to be talking about not loving the world. Not loving the world. And not loving these things of the world. Many times you see many of movies and many of wars and many of battles where people go in for love of country and love of flag. They love their flag so much that they go out and fight for that emblem or that symbol. Which is an awesome thing if you love God first. If you got love God first, you're doing it for that symbol that stands for that nation so that nation can have that freedom to worship God. But if we're just worshiping a flag, that symbol, then it's against God's word. If we just love the country just because the country is there and we love it, we are running a risk of loving that flag and that country more than God. And God can be a jealous God. He can be. When you love something else more than Him, He becomes a jealous God. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, documents were signed ending World War I. And this day was set aside to honor, remember, and thank all the men and women who served this nation in its time of conflict. To honor those who bravely put their lives in harm's way, it is by the battles that these men and women fought and sacrifices they made that we as a people can sit in this church right now and enjoy the freedom of praying together, praising together, and loving our God together without the fear of prosecution or persecution, of prosecution, and in some nations even execution. I am an honor and thankful to the veterans of the United States of America and I applaud them. I applaud them and I salute them for what they've done. For where they brought this nation to. What they had fought so hard that this nation has placed God first. Amen. But yet, somehow or another, this past election, it showed that we are voting to remove God away. What happened? What happened? You want to look back and say, what, 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 what happened that, that we chose to ignore what God stands for? Well, Pastor, Indiana didn't vote that way. You're right. Indiana didn't. You're right. If you look at the country, it was almost all blue <coughs> for the way they voted. But I praise God still that I live in a nation where we can vote. And I live in a nation where I can still hope. And I live in a nation where I can still pray. And maybe God wants us in this situation where we are forced to pray for our government. Amen. Where we're forced to pray for our president. Maybe. This is where we need to be. When we don't support or we don't try to stand where the government is helping us out, but where we're helping the government, where we're praying to government, where we are bringing God back to the government. Amen. See? Yep, we are too much in concern of trying to let the government run everything. We need to start praying for everyone in our government. Amen. And the soldier Jesus. is part of our government. Praise God. See, we got to be careful on loving this world because it all can be taken away in no time at all. And you'll find out towards the end of this service on a letter that it was just heartbreaking. Because see, there's still battles going on and there's not battles that I'm talking about where we're fighting with guns and tanks. See, each one of you is a veteran. Okay, each one of you is a veteran or a spiritual war. 
There is a spiritual war going on right here and right now. Right here and right now we're fighting these battles. And we have an enemy. And an enemy has a target. And that target is you. It's targeting our youth. It's targeting our government. It's targeting our families. It's targeting our schools. It's targeting us in general. We need to stand together and realize it and pray together. See, the worst things I've seen during this election was people standing and dividing against each other for different kind of things. Different ideas. I didn't say one word to anybody as I saw paragraph after paragraph after paragraph after paragraph of why I should vote for President Obama. But thank God I live in the United States. But if you were post something against that, you would have an immediate attack. Yep. Immediate attack. Some people were afraid because they would be called prejudice. And you know what? <laughs> I finally stood in line and cast my vote. And I finally went up to the person that was posting, oh, it's a friend of mine, posting all the things about it, and I said, I stand in this line to cast my vote. And you're right. I stand in this line, I'm waiting, and the only smile I have on my face <laughs> is knowing that my vote is going to cancel yours. <laughs> I did fear because she had the whole entire Wilberforce University behind her. <laughs> I did fear of retaliation on this. But it came back as understanding that we have the right to vote. And because of the American soldier, we have that right to vote. And even Martin Luther King, for those who stood and said, he said, judge not a, a man by the con color of his skin, but by the content of his character. Praise God. I found myself defending myself whether I was prejudiced or not. Praise God. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Colin Powell, I will vote for. Martin Luther King, I will vote for. Because I'm judging that person by the content, by the character, and the contents of their character. Praise God. We are a nation. We still are a nation, and we still can make a difference in this nation. We just have to pray. Every single day we have to pray for our president. Every single day we have to pray. The Bible actually tells us to pray. But on loving the, the world, on not loving the world, do not love the world or anything in the world. Can you go to the next? Do not, 1 John 2, 15-16 Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love the for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. 1 John 2, 2 15 through 16. In the message, it says, Don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's ways. There's too many people. I love the way the world is. Really, have you took a look at the world? Maybe you know you love the way your home is. Maybe you love the way your house is. Maybe you love the way you're running your home. But do you really love the way the world is? Because if you look around, there's so much hunger and pain. There's so much misery and war. Think about, if you love the ways of the world, because 
That is the way of the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out the love of our Father. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own. How many of us are that way? I want my own. Put it this way, you're not taking it with you. The Pharaoh strided. <laughs> wanting your own way in everything you do. Wanting everything for yourself. Wanting to appear important has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from Him. It just isolates you from Him. It takes you away from Him. The world and all is wanting. We're always wanting and wanting and wanting. And uh, this Christmas is on the way, isn't it? <laughs> How many of you got children? Praise God, I already have the list for them. They're always wanting. But whoever does what God wants, it is set for eternity. It's set for eternity. Praise God. And it's a danger. What is the one thing that most people want? What is the one thing? Money. Somebody just said money right away. That's yeah. it. Money. That's exactly yeah. it. That is what people want. The love of money. The money. That's what they want. Yeah. If you go out here and people are asking you for some, some, even if you, how much is gas nowadays? Thank you. <laughs> if, even if you want some gas, okay? You ask that person, it's like, well, let me give you some gas in your gas tank. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I, they don't even have a car. They just want the money. I want money. You know, money, 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 money. Money is what makes the world go around. Money. Right? But yet, one day, you're going to find money Blowing around like these leaves out here. One day, money's not going to be important because the government is going to turn it to something else. Yeah. And it's so easy, so easy to change that right now, to convince somebody right now why we don't need currency. Because every single day, right here in this city, thousands and thousands Hundreds of thousands of counterfeit dollars are going through and changing. Yeah. I see them every day. So what is it if we just go all to a world system where nobody can rob you or take your money? It's always with you. You know, I just put a little chip on your hand and you can just go to the bank anytime you want. Isn't it awesome? I saw this to a Christian the other day. I went over there, what if, if we put a chip on them and an American soldier has died and we're searching for them and then we can get a satellite and trace them and find their body and bring them back home. That's a great idea. That's a scary idea. Yes. That's a great idea. But what if we, put, we had your children in the hospital and somebody's trying to kidnap them and we put a chip on them and then we can actually locate them anywhere in the world right away. We know where your child is. Well, sign me up for that. Sign me up for that. Trust me, I've talked to people and it's an awesome idea to them when it's talking to them. And then, but all these chips now have a glint in them and they all start with 666. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Nothing to it. <laughs> You know, those Christians are crazy anyway. We're about to take care of them anyway because they're, they're spreading all this gossip and rumors of that being a demon sign. It's just a glitch in the system. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to convince somebody? How easy is it to convince somebody? Because we love this world so much, we're willing to give up anything. After 9-11, we were so scared that we gave up our rights to a lot of things. government was able to listen in and you know what you can call me a conspiracy theory but look it up there's actually vans running around the major cities that can scan your vehicle right next to that yeah. they were only they were made for out foreign lands 
but that the United States government seeing the interest of putting them in the major cities in case of an attack. Where am I going with this? Because the love of this world is going to get us nowhere. How many of you guys love your vehicles, your cars, those muscle cars? I, I won't lie. I mean, I would, lo I would love to have a Mustang. <laughs> Are you with too? <laughs> In a Corvette. I would love to have one. But if it's worth losing my soul, no, it's not. I don't love this church building. Well, Pastor, you're sitting here talking about money, 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 but you just took an offering. And that's what makes your church go around. That's what makes your church go. That's what keeps your lights on. No, my faith does. Trust me on this. Yeah. <laughs> the faith of our church keeps this building going. Amen. I don't love the church building. I love the church. Amen. And I love you. I love you. Amen. That's the reason why I always come here. Okay? And if by some chance God calls me down, and doesn't provide another place. I want to continue worshiping here. See, I already know what's in my heart. I already know what's in my heart. Because see, I was already asked to leave. I was already asked to leave. And then what did I say? I will take my step down. I want to worship God here. I want to sit in the back Amen. row. I'll sit quietly. I will praise Him back here. Please let me stay in this church. And I was told, no. <laughs> so I know it was in my heart. I just want to worship God. Amen. So when I say I love the church, I love the people in the church. Amen. Okay? We're not supposed to love this building. No. And I know some of you love these chairs. Absolutely. <laughs> We're not supposed to love these things. Praise God. Can you go to the next slide, please? In the book of John 14, beginning in verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, if you go to One Way Christian Church, you know this verse. Because this is the basis of One Way Christian Church. Here's only one way. No one comes into thy Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would have been seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be enough for us. When is it enough for us? I guarantee if God the Father will come down Himself right here and you will see Him two months from now, you'll be doing the same thing, trying to get a Corvette. Okay? Trying to get a mansion. Trying to go to the latest party. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd. Maybe this is for somebody in the, in the, out there in the audio world. But when is it enough? Even Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and I will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? See, we can see a car. You know, <laughs> I was told a while back that I was supposed to give away my van. <laughs> and, and it said that God had told me to give my van to this family. And I, I just didn't hear. I was told. I felt it. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And then, the van got hit once. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to get it repaired. We parked it up. And then it got hit again. This time it was just totaled. And the voice comes to me saying, weren't you supposed to give that van away? <laughs> weren't you supposed to give the van away? 
See, this is God. I'm not saying He totaled it. I'm just saying He saw it. I what I was supposed to do. And when I walked away from that and ignored the voice of the Father, I stood on my own. I stood on my own. I forgive, I forgive those people that hit that. <laughs> God is in control. We have a rich Father and He loves us and one day, He will give us our riches and glory. I brought up the van issue because some of us have been spoken to. Some of us have been spoken to and we understand what God told us to do. But some of us have been disobedient, like I was. And you don't want to put yourself in that situation because you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's coming when that was down the road. You know, when the American soldier goes in and signs up, I really truly believe he's signing up everything he loves away. Because he doesn't know if he's going to go to bat. He doesn't know if he's going to come back home to the things he loves. He doesn't know if he's going to come back to his wife. He doesn't know if he's going to come back to his father. He doesn't know if he's coming back at all. Or in one piece. So I love the American soldier when he goes out. Because he understands he's fighting for God, flag, and country. Praise God. <laughs> and it should be in that order. Just like us, the Christian soldier. We should be fine fighting for God, flag, and country. Well, Pastor, what about the family? What about your wife? What about... It's all under God. When you follow God, God will help you in everything you do and take control of everything you do. See, right here in America, people are fighting. People are fighting every day, and we don't understand that people are going hungry. We don't understand how much are we are under attack. Until you read a letter like this. Can you go to the next one? Entitled The Jersey Note. Whoever reads this, I am in the dark. As I am writing this, I am dying. I'm 28 years old. My name is Mike. And I had to to break in your house today. I took a blanket off your couch and I have hypothermia. I didn't take anything from you. I waved through, a wave threw me out of my house down the block. I don't think I'm going to make it. The water outside is around 10 feet deep. And the water, and there's no rescue in sight. Tell my dad I love him and I try getting out. His number is blank, blank, blank. His name is Tony. I hope you can read this in the dark. Goodbye. I took a black jacket too. God Almighty. Help me. God Almighty, help me. Can you feel this man's pain? Can you feel his desperacy? You would think he's in the battlefield in Iraq and under attack. He is in the minefield and tanks are coming at him. You would think he enlisted in the military. You would think that he was just sitting in his home when Sandy came through the storm and a wave hit his house and drug him out and he fell and lost everything. He lost his home. He lost his clothing. He lost his car. He lost everything. 
he had nothing. What he loved the most about what he had, and probably never put God first, now he's been taken away, everything has been taken away from him. And how did he sign? God Almighty, help me. And it's when everything goes away that we start crying out for God. God Almighty, help me. Help me right now. Everything's been taken away. We need to start praising Him now when things are good. When we have the good things now. When we have the American soldiers still fighting for us, still standing firm, still standing and believing in the American flag, that God under one nation under God one nation under God we can still praise Him we can still come to church we can still rejoice we can still praise without being persecuted prosecuted Amen. this young man saw a battle it was a spiritual battle you know how many of us have found ourselves in that this man found himself in actual water. But many of us, our problems are the floods. How many problems we had? How many problems we got ourselves into? How many problems we're trying to swim out of? You know, the young man made it. That young man made it. He was interviewed and he was praising God and thanking God. And he said, I was going to die. I was giving up. I have given up all hope. So I was thinking about God Almighty. And now I want to live. I want to live. See, many of us, we, we are automatically going to the, I want to die. How many people you, fear, you hear about jumping off buildings because the stock market crashed or they lost everything? They were swimming. They just couldn't take it anymore. This young man lost everything. He was in that with nothing to lose. He had only one thing to gain life and he was swimming for his own life. That's the only thing he was trying to do. He was cold. He wanted to get warm. And praise God. God Almighty help me. God Almighty help me. Don't get to that point. Let's start thanking Him now and praising Him now. Amen. So yes, when Pastor Jeremy said that we ought to hug a soldier or give him a shake or just thank Him, we ought to. Amen. Yep. We ought to because we don't know what they went through. Maybe the soldier you're hugging was just a pencil pusher. Maybe he was just behind the desk. But praise God. Thank Him anyway. Because if it wasn't for Him pushing that paperwork, that other soldiers wouldn't have got what He needs. They wouldn't have got that military backing. They wouldn't have got that support they needed. Thank Him. But yet, remember, you are too in battle right now. You are a Christian soldier. And you're blessed because you're in an American land. 